Roshin, it's nice uh, uh, speaking with you, especially about ourselves. We're very good at talking about ourselves, aren't we? And uh, I'm happy to have this uh, opportunity. Just say a few words with you. Uh, I come from a little town in the north of Ireland called Balamoney, and uh, there was a, a population explosion back in 1935 when twins were born and uh, one of them is myself and the other is Father Brian Capuchin in America. He has been in America for uh, 55 years or more and I was in Zambia for 50 years. So we, that's where we were born, that's where we ended up as far away from one another as you possibly could get. One in Oregon or later in San Francisco, but it was about 12,000 miles away. So it was halfway around the world. <clears throat> if we were placed any further, we'd be getting nearer. And uh, so that's the way it worked out. Now, I know that you like you have an interest in uh, how we became Capuchins. I think, you see, we moved from the north of Ireland after the war and uh, or actually just before the end of the world war our father was a, a racing car driver and sheep uh, a cattle dealer and all this he had his own car but uh, he, he was put in charge of ambulances in london uh, so he nearly got killed a few times so when he came home he grabbed us the family moved us out of the north down to the south uh, to the the, what we call today the 26 counties and so the, that was for safety and uh, this is where we were altar boys to two of us we were very like one another in so many ways and uh, uh, we were altar servers for about 11 years or that uh, before we joined the Capuchins and I did not know that he was going to join the captions we shared everything with the, everything but the inner spiritual stuff we, we, we weren't sharing that uh, much so i didn't know anything about it and i took him out one day for to watch a cricket match because we were very fond of cricket and um, and uh, at half time in the cricket match we went for a bit of lunch so i told my twin there's going to be a divorce uh, I'm going to join the Capuchins. And he smiled. He said, so am I. And I did not know it till that moment that he was going to join the Capuchins. There was no question of either of us following one another. It was a complete, uh, I don't know how he explained it. I know that when my aunt went to see Padre Pio and brought uh, her sick child to Padre Pio, uh, Padre Pio blessed the child and it was a hole in the heart they used to call it a uh, blue baby and the, the child got better and he's a big man and he's still going he's a writer books and all at the moment and he's over 80 years of age and um, but when she went back later to say to Padre Pio my son is all right I want to uh, thank you Padre Pio the, this is through the interpreter you know thanking Padre Pio for what she did for what he did for her son uh, then she wanted to say something nice about and he says oh Padre Pio I have got my two nephews in your Capuchin order in Ireland this was 1958 and uh, the very end of 1958 and Padre Pio said uh, tell the twins they'll be baptized that they will be ordained one day. Uh, so that, 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 that was a terrific consolation. And my aunt never told either of us until we were ordained. She waited for eight years. And uh, so when we got ordained, uh, and as you know, before our first profession, we, our uh, reception into the order, we had to we were given new names and you had to take a name that nobody else was in the order. You couldn't have two Roshines at the same time. We always had to have a different one. When a man died, you could possibly take on the name. Uh, 
So the list came around to all the novices. Fourteen of us were joining, and we all filled. And this was an exception. It was the highest number ever at any one year, the uh, <clears throat> fourteen. Uh, so when the list came down, I, I said, uh, I don't like the names that are left here, because we took them uh, in turn. The eldest lad we got uh, down one. By the time it got down to me in the group, I said, uh, I don't like those names that I left. So the list went back into the provincial, and uh, he looked at it, and, oh, Sonny, he said, there's a name missing here. The, 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 there's 14 names, and there's, 30, there's only 13 names. Has one gone home already? <laughs> and so he sent, sent for, the, for the one that didn't take the name, and that happened to be me. So when I went in, uh, the provincial asked, uh, what, what name would you like, Sonny? And uh, I said, I would like Jude. He says, a perfect name for you, he says. You're a hopeless case. <laughs> so that's how I got the name Jude. My twin was given the name Aloysius, but he reverted after Vatican II when we got the freedom to t go back to our baptismal name. He went back to Brian, and I, I kept Jude. So that's the two of us. One in uh, America, one in Africa. I ended up in Livingston. I, was, uh, I have it all there. I was. I could show you Livingston. It's all on the television there. Uh, but uh, I went to a little town. It was very much a sort of a, a, a colonial town. It was British. And the, the, the British people, many of them, there were quite a number of Irish there too, but many Europeans held all the positions in immigration, customs headquarters for Zambia was in Livingston, uh, the immigration department, uh, the school teachers and managers of big firms and factories that were there. They were all uh, people, white people from Europe. In fact, when I went into the church the first day, I couldn't believe it. The whole church was as if I, I thought I was back in Dublin. And, uh, and I saw this became the task ahead of me. This was just after independence of Zambia, 1964. And yet the society wasn't changed, but it was about to start in an evolution where the educated Africans started to move into these positions in town and so I encouraged them all to start coming to, to the church and uh, I suppose as I look back after so many years I was able to see that the church had changed from a foreign European body of God's people to an indigenous African people with its own African leadership and pa uh, parish councils and all set up. So that was the first big thing, but it took 20 years for me to work through that transition where I could look for a complete change. And as I drove back to the Lord, back to Livingston to my little town. Uh, it's as if the Lord spoke to me like he spoke to Paul or Saul on the road to Damascus. Uh, what are you going to do about her? I could hear this. What are you going to do about her? In a big way, uh, judo was one of my uh, special clubs that I started. I brought in 11 Japanese professionals, full-time judo men, to Zambia and kept them for uh, uh, over 10 years. 